Welcome back to episode two of the Joy Shtick, where I give you my shtick on games and the like. Today I'm joined by one Connor Haller. He's a friend from uh, from home. Why don't you introduce yourself? Oh, hey there. What am I supposed to say? <laughs> uh, whatever you want to say, dude. Um, tell 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 the listeners a little bit about your uh, your gaming background. You know, like what would you you know what do you what do you do what do you play now? What do you used to play? Um, oh, that's a good one. Um, yeah, so I guess I started out on the, probably the GameCube. It's probably what most people started out on. Oh, I um, mean, anybody around our age really started out on the GameCube. Yeah, unless they're a bitch. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, and then went up to PS2, played some classic shit there, then the Wii, and then got on the Xbox grind, and I'm still on the Xbox grind. Solid, solid. Um, yeah, I, I was I was actually very similar now that uh. Now that you mentioned it, we had a we had a very similar console path. Obviously, I play a lot of PC games now, but uh, I was almost I think I was exactly the same. Actually, started off with the GameCube, had a PlayStation Two that I played a lot of a lot of, a lot of games on there. Uh, then I mm-hmm. went to a Wii, and then I went to Xbox. We we have the same console uh, console path. I mean, obviously, GameCube. You think back and like, there's never a, there was never a bad game for gamecube at least from from what i remember no, being absolutely not i don't have a single bad memory on my gamecube no. the um, goat like i <laughs> i still have mine oh I, I think we actually got rid of ours which really upset me when i found that out but uh i remember i think the first game i remember playing was uh was super monkey ball i don't know if you've ever heard of that but i've uh, heard of that i never it was i don't think i ever played that it was like a platformer almost um, it was like a puzzle solving platformer and you you played these these monkeys and these balls, hence the name. Um, you know, solving you had to get to the goal and there was like it it wasn't like a phenomenal game by any stretch of the imagination, but you know, my neighbors and I used to play it all the time. So like a Mario type thing? Kind of. Um, but like you couldn't like you could could you jump actually? I don't remember if you could make the ball jump. Because obviously like you're in a ball, so you can only roll around and stuff. But Yeah. It was, it, they had, like, and Super Monkey Ball 2 had, like, multiplayer games. You could play, like, Monkey Golf and, like, Monkey Tennis. It was, like, it was, the, it was, mm-hmm. it was Wii Sports before Wii Sports was Wii Sports. Uh, and I also had, I think it was maybe my second, uh, Pokemon game, which was Pokemon, I think it was, like, Pokemon, oh my god, what was it called on, on the, the GameCube? There's a, it was a Pokemon game on the I never knew there was Pokemon games on the GameCube. Oh yeah, it was. Oh, it was Pokemon XD, Tale Gale of Darkness. It basically like they had this mechanic where. Uh, Sounds like a porn title. <laughs> <laughs> Sasha Gray in Gale Pokemon of Darkness. Pokemon XD. <laughs> Pikachu meets meets his stepmom. Oh Jesus! Right, never mind, gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but basically they had this game mechanic where. Uh, these Pokemons had were like infected with darkness, and when you capture them, you could like heal them. And it was uh, it was really fun because uh, the other Pokemon game I played up on at that point was uh, Fire Red on the Game Boy, and that was like you know the whole two D. Obviously, well, the old Pokemon games, classic. But yeah, I played all those too. But when it's like a three, you you could you felt like you were really exploring in uh, Pokemon XD. It was like because uh-huh. it was like 3D and they had all these like dope shots because it was a console so it could handle it better. Mm-hmm. But uh, yeah. when I when I moved over to PS2, obviously we have you know can't can't talk about the PlayStation without talking about Star Wars Battlefront. See which one though? Oh, the original, no Star Wars Battlefront two. No, I only ever played the second one. Oh, you're missing out. I mean, they're basically the same. Well, I mean, yeah, they just added all the jedis and shit into the second one yeah but, i mean i only ever played it like local single player <laughs> but oh uh, yeah no yeah that's all i played on it too yeah. <laughs> i i didn't even know that like online gaming was a thing back when i had a playstation 2 yeah no same i was like there are others i never played multiplayer until call of duty 4 that was the first ever yeah mine was called du- <laughs> my first call of duty was call of duty 5 on the wii and uh, and when you bought COD Five on the Wii, Call of Duty Five or Call of Duty Three? Five. 
Okay, when, I had three on that. I had the Wii gun controller yeah, thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I was going to say, when, you, when, you, bought, oh when you bought Call of Duty, it came with, like, you could strap in the controller and the nunchuck into this, like, gun thing, so you could stand there and, like, actually point yeah. and, like, click. Like, it felt like you were actually holding a... Well, it felt like to, you know, 11-year-old me that you were, like, actually holding a rifle. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was great. I played through that whole freaking campaign oh, yeah. there was there was so many looking back on that though there was so many glitches in the wii version of that game do you remember um i don't remember what the map is called uh on cod 5 but it was like it, it was like a cliff that there was like one side of the map had like a cliff and there was like a waterfall in the back do you remember that map that i'm talking about vaguely i'm, I'm looking at i'm looking i never it right i now. never played it on the i never played it on the wii oh it was, it was literally called cliffside um but yeah there was a rock in the back of that map um that if you jumped a certain way you could go through the clipping in the rock and get underneath the map but you wouldn't fall through so basically it was like basically like underneath wall hacks so you could just because you could oh you could, is this the one with all the bunkers and stuff yeah. like on they remade it in oh, one of the oh, more, yeah. they remade it in one of the more recent call of duties to make it look like a golf course huh but uh of course they did <laughs> But, uh, you could, yeah, you could jump through the rock and basically you could just shoot up through the ground. And... Oh, so it's like the whole map was clear and you could see everybody. Yeah, so what, <laughs> so what you would do to cheese it is you'd get a class with bouncing Bettys on it, uh, put a, put a bouncing Betty right where you drop down, so if somebody tried to come down and kill you, they'd get killed by the bouncing Betty immediately. So you could basically spend the entire... Because it took, it took, like, a good minute or two, unless you knew the jump perfectly, to get through the rock. So you could yeah. spend, like, half the game underneath the map and get, like, 25, 30 kills without anybody touching you. Because even <laughs> if you dropped a grenade right on top of your head, it wouldn't go through because the way the map yeah. was rendered, it wouldn't do any damage through the ground. But you could do you could do damage upwards through the ground. So it was great because you could get dogs and you could just watch all the dogs running around and, like, chasing everybody. <laughs> That's great. When you search COD5 Clipside, the first thing that comes up is glitch. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. See, um, I'm, I'm looking back on it now. That game only had seven maps and eight if you count Airfield, which is not a ton. Or, or wait, hold on. Is this? Oh, no, no. There was... Oh, no, there was more. There was, like... Well, they added more, but, like, the the seven basic like ones base game, yeah. were, like, Cliffside, Castle... Nightfire, Asylum, Hangar Station, Castle, and and Macon. Macon Atoll, the night map. What was the uh what was the town one that was like in a little like German town? Um that had the tanks in it. Oh yeah. Was that um That was a great map too. I I don't think they had that game in the in the Weaver that, that map in the Wii version, so when I when I got on Xbox, it was, like, the second map that I got, and I was like, what the fuck is this? There's fucking tanks? I was like, I was not ready for this. Yeah, they tried to go Battlefield with it. Oh, my God. <laughs> God Con Connor's, Connor's got an affinity to the uh, to the Battlefield series over the uh, Call of Duty series, at least, at least recently. Well, for the last, like, what, since Modern Warfare 2? <laughs> really? You didn't even like, like, Black Ops 2 or that? I didn't even buy Black Ops 2. I had the first Black Ops, I think. So you were like, you're real, like, either, for at least for the Call of Duty scene, you're like real old school, like Modern Warfare 2 and, and yeah. or, or nothing. It's gonna it's gonna take a miracle for me to buy another Call of Duty game. I mean, pro uh, there's news that they're remaking, uh, like they're Modern Warfare 2. Yeah, but they're gonna package it in with whatever piece of shit they yeah. put out to go along with it so we're gonna have to buy that also game, not but... gonna spend 30 dollars for that <laughs> no you gotta wait for it to go on sale or yeah maybe <laughs> maybe not if even it's anything it. if it's anything more than like 20 dollars <laughs> yeah i feel like games are i mean they've always been expensive though they were they weren't 60 though ever until like six or seven years ago i feel like they were always like 40 and then it went up to 50, and then now it's just like it's 60. It seems to be the baseline. Most shit isn't even 60 anymore, though. You got to pay like 80 if you want the like the intro version of the game, and then 90 for the bronze version, 100 for the silver version. 
They have like 18 versions of every game now that comes out. Yeah, I mean FIFA's been doing that. You and you know how I feel about FIFA as of, as of recently. The 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 FIFA 14 will always be my favorite FIFA in my mind. Um, FIFA 14 and and into FIFA 15, uh, those two games were just just phenomenal. Um, and I never played 14, but 15 was my intro. Yeah, it was a great game. you uh, <laughs> I I, I want to tell the story of uh. It was the first time Connor ever beat me in FIFA. <laughs> so we're playing we're playing Ultimate Team, right? It's it's probably February. Um and we live in the northeast uh in the United States, so it's a giant snowstorm going on outside. Like a, a typical nor'easter if you're familiar with the term. Did we have school off? Like I feel like we Yeah, had, like, I think it was like it was like a Tuesday or something. Yeah. Cuz I cuz both my parents were out of the house cuz they had like stuff to do cuz it was in the middle of the week. Um, yeah. and Connor had, had never beat me in FIFA up until this point, you know, and as the typical good friend that I was, the first game we ever played, I scored 10 goals and three with the goalkeeper. Oh, you scored like 12 <laughs> <laughs> and like four with the goalie. <laughs> so we're playing this game and I go down one, nothing like relatively early. It was like 20, 25th minute that I go down. Um, and it's like 75th minute, and I'm just not, I'm, like, I'm not, I can't score a goal. And, and I'm sitting there just, like, fuming in my chair. And because I didn't want to give up this perfect record that I had. And I think in the 80th minute, I just turned off the console. And I came back. And I was no, like, no, I think, no, because it finished. Did it? Because I think I, I, the last, like, 10 minutes of the game, I was passing around the back. <laughs> oh, so maybe I just, like, turned off my monitor and, like, walked out of the room or something. Yeah. And I, like, came back and I was like, what happened? My internet cut out. And you're like, yeah, yeah, sure it did. Of course it didn't, right? I was, <laughs> I was just fucking pissed. So. It's the only time I was, I was ever up a goal on you. <laughs> so I was literally, like, just passing it around the yeah. back. So. Trying everything to not let you have the ball. <laughs> so I'm asking him, like, yo, we gotta play again. Connor's like, no fucking way. No, we're not playing. Just like, I don't know if he was actually not going to play me again or he just wanted to, to piss me off. But, uh. Yeah, it was a little bit of both. <laughs> but I, I gave him an ultimatum. I was like, I was like, if you don't play me back in 10 minutes, I'm driving to your house. And, you know, bear in mind, we're in the middle of a blizzard. You know, there's already a good, like, four or five inches on the ground and it's coming down hard. Like, you can barely, you can barely see, like, 100 feet in front of you. So, 10 minutes go by. <laughs> And I'm sitting there, like, Xbox controller, like, set up so I could turn it off with just, like, one one push of the button. And I'm like, you gonna play me again? I don't hear anything from the end of his mic. And I'm like, alright, I'm coming. Turned off the controller, hopped in my car, and drove, like, a mile to his house in the middle of a snowstorm. And what he had done is his parents were in the in, the, in his basement watching a movie. And him and his, his brother were upstairs uh, in the living room on the Xbox. And what they had done is they'd gone around the ha the top two floors of the house. And yeah, I went around and turned all the lights off. Turned off all of the lights in their house. So I pull up to this dark house and I'm ringing the front doorbell. His parents come up the stairs like, who the fuck is ringing the doorbell? At like 9.30 at night in the middle of the blizzard. See my dumb ass standing on the porch like, where's your son? They have no fucking clue because all the lights are off and they've been downstairs for the past hour and change. I ran into the living room. This kid's sitting behind the couch with his brother. Like, he knows I'm coming for him and he's just like... <laughs> so I turn on the Xbox, I hand him the controller, and I'm like, we're playing again. And walk out of the house. Uh... My dad was like, uh, Tim's at the door? <laughs> I was like, just leave him out there. I think if your parents hadn't known me for a decent amount of time already, they would have thought I was, like, insane or something. Yeah, no, there would have been, like, this kid's gonna come in here and murder our entire family. <laughs> uh, I mean, it was a good thing that I had, like, a decent car. Because if I had been driving around in, like, some little shitty sedan or something, I probably would have ran off the road. I'm surprised you didn't, uh freaking jeep <laughs> i mean todd my cousin was driving that for a while on the brake stop working for a little bit that was that was good but uh back back to games um i definitely i was just thinking what's like your all-time favorite gamecube game all-time favorite gamecube game that's tough um 
See, I didn't have a ton of games on the game. You know what a game, this is really obscure. A game that me and my neighbors uh, used to play all the time was uh, SpongeBob SquarePants Lights Camera Pants. What in Yeah, the... exactly. <laughs> It was a it was a four play it was up to four players and you like had a bunch of these challenges to complete like as a mm-hmm. team and you had to get a certain amount of points uh, and every there like there'd be like four challenges in like a segment of the board and whoever like would win out of that challenge uh, would get you know like points towards their overall score so basically it was like you were working together to make sure you could progress to the next area but also trying to do your best so you could win the area and get points. But it was just, like, Spongebob-themed. So they had, like, certain challenges where it was, like, you had to play in, like, a band. And they would, like, play Spongebob songs. And, like, there was, like, a driving course that you had to complete. And it was, like, a race. Uh, Mm -hmm. And we got up to this one segment where none of us could get enough points uh, individually to progress. And the first challenge in the area was so hard uh, that we didn't want to restart the whole area because it took us so long to just beat the first challenge that we were we were convinced. We were like, if we do this last challenge enough, we'll get enough points and we can pass on to the next area. And I think probably <laughs> over the course of two weeks, we did this maybe a hundred times and we could just never get it, so we just gave up. That game is still sitting in my basement with the SD, with the, the, the save card. Uh-huh. That, that we have that save on, and I refuse to open it to that day because I'm because I'm still mad about the fact that we couldn't beat it. <laughs> uh, I was gonna say I've never known you to give up on anything in gaming. No, and it still upsets me that I can't beat it. Like I'm I'm gonna bring the Wii to school or something. And uh, actually, speaking of Nintendo, their one company that I feel like keeps improving with their consoles like i don't know if you have you ever spent any time with the switch <clears throat> no i would i if i had the spare money to buy one i would like to get one because it just looks really really because i had um i obviously started out on like the game boy and all that shit and then worked up to i had a psp too for a long time i went hard on a oh my god ratchet and clank i probably put like 200 hours into that on the psp wow. um but i don't know that kind of just seems like Cause I never really played like I played the Wii, but not like I probably have more hours in like freaking solitaire than I do <laughs> playing like the Wii. But um, so but the Switch just seems like a such a dope like it seems like all those things all put together. Yeah. So my roommate has a Switch, uh, and it's it's fantastic. I've played through almost the entirety of Breath of the Wild on it and that's mm-hmm. just a fantastic game uh so well done there's a it's a perfect mix of uh like extra content where you could just deviate from the storyline for days on end and just dick around killing cows and doing side quests yeah and they also make the storyline fun to the point where you could play through and just do the storyline missions and feel like you've played through an entire game where in certain games uh, that are that are like that, for example, like Assassin's Creed, I feel like are some of the some of the early ones are are really good. Uh, you know, like Two and Brotherhood are fantastic games where you could play like just the storyline. But I feel like the recent games, like I wasn't a huge fan of Assassin's Creed Three. I feel like that was one of those games where you needed to do some of the side missions to to make the game entertaining and give it more of that replayability, because playing through the story mode just kind of felt meh i don't know if, yeah. I don't know if you played assassin's creed 3 or not no i never have but i i can kind of get that with um i played far cry far cry 4 and that's how that game felt like it was kind of like you could blaze through the campaign in like two hours probably if you were good enough um but like i hardly even played the campaign so i was just going around <laughs> sticking around kind of like gta just doing kind of all random stuff, kind of like that. G- just speaking of GTA, I feel like GTA is one of those games that's built for the extra content. Like the storyline's almost secondary to it, to especially with the with the the multiplayer aspect, where it's almost you're almost uh, inclined to do more of just like the 
you know, steal cars, sell them, whatever, rather than, and, and in single player, you could do, you could do all that and play through this, you know, drug dealing, yeah. whatever story. I haven't played it in so long that I've, I've, I've kind of forgotten what the main storyline's about, but. I never actually finished the game because yeah, my I. brother, my brother ruined it for me at the end of the game. So I never ended up finishing it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, uh, obviously I eventually found out what happens. It's like, you gotta kill one person dies, right? Basically. Yeah. You have to, you have to pick which one dies. That's just a bad choice, honestly. Although I feel like there's a standout answer for me. I don't know. Cause they all bring like different things. Well, I, th I think uh, I think obviously I think the what the you can't kill Trevor. Depends on how you feel and how racist you are. I think you can't kill Trevor. Yeah, but that's like the obvious one. Right, because he just he's so. I feel like they made it that way. He's so out there that you would almost feel bad killing him, and he just like yeah. like the first scene you meet him, he's like in some trailer fucking some dude's girl, and he sees Michael <laughs> on the newscast. Or he, he hears Michael say something on the newscast while he's robbing the jewelry store, and he's like, oh, that motherfucker. And then he fucking curb stomps the dude. Like, yeah. Like, geez, like, the, like, the introduction, like, there's, I don't know of an introduction that's ever been, like, more polarizing of a video game character. Where he just, Yeah, no, like, absolutely. Ugh. But, um, I feel like Michael is the easy choice for me. Like, he's kind of a dick of a dad. He's not really that good a dude. It kind of is just a piece of shit. Yeah. And, um... Oh, what's the name of the third dude? I'm totally blanking on the name of the third the third character in, in the, uh... in the single player for GTA. Tre Trevor, Michael, and... I'm, I'm oh. googling it now because it's gonna, it's gonna upset me. What the fuck is this? I know. Name? What is his name? <laughs> <laughs> it's actually so annoying. I don't want to be racist. I don't remember his name. I know. <laughs> it's, not, it's not like Daquan or anything no, like that. No, it's like uh, I don't know why I feel like it starts with like a. Oh my god, this is terrible. <laughs> it's not. Oh, uh, it got Michael. Oh my god, what the Oh, fuck? that's what it is, okay. Oh, you bastard. How did you not find it already? What does it start with? An F. Oh my god, what is his name? <laughs> it's not like Francis or something. No. Oh my god, it's Franklin. Oh... <laughs> How did I forget that? That's terrible. Yeah, I was way off. I was too racist with my name. <laughs> he's honestly, he's my favorite character out of the three. Like, Trevor's funny as shit, but... Trevor's funny as shit, but I need to, I needed to break from him every once yeah. in a while. I wish I'd played more of the old GTA games, because I feel like so many people rave about, like, GTA 3. Yeah, and 4, because I never played yeah. any of those either. And then that my goes, that goes back to the question this. of, like, because obviously you're going to remember older games that you played when you were younger with a lot more fondness like i remember modern warfare 2 as being like arguably the the best like the the most fun i've ever had with a video game ever i don't think i ever got mad at that video game like the way i will with like PUBG or csgo sometimes yeah yeah no that's that's true i don't really remember us like raging ever no because you were always like hey i got killed oh well like you'd get angry if you were on like six kills and you were like one away from an ac 130 but like well guess yeah. what you f you reset you go you go next team deathmatch or next domination and you could try it again but mm -hmm. then like you'd be you get that 11th kill and get like either the ac 130 or the chopper gunner which by the way it was ac 130 you don't fucking run chopper gunner as your 11th kill streak that's fucking dumb I, I ran Chopper Gunner, but I never I never got a nuke, so it doesn't. Actually, I did get one nuke, but I never had I didn't have the streak on. Oh, you got twenty five kills, but didn't have the nuke enabled. Yeah, because I literally never thought I was ever gonna get it, so I, I thought, why wait? Kill streak. As soon as I got the ability to run that seven eleven twenty five, you know, 
Seven for the for yeah. the for the AC one thirty. Eleven for the chopper yeah, gun. People had that or, shit or, down sorry, to like seven for the for the chopper gun. No, what the fuck was it? Um, it wasn't AC one thirty, because it was AC one thirty or chopper gunner at eleven kills. What was the name of wasn't the? It's not like Harrier. Or it something? wasn't. It was a Harrier strike. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you would yeah. run. You were on Harrier at at seven kills. Then you'd run chopper gunner or AC one thirty at eleven, and then. What, well, what you would do is you'd you'd run Harrier, and then once you call it in, you would wait until it would run fully. Cause like I don't think I don't even think you would call in two kill streaks at the same time, but you would r- let it run its yeah, no. you would let it let it run its length because you wanted it to get you as close to twenty five as possible. Cause like if you hit eleven, you didn't want to call in the the AC one thirty immediately or the chopper gunner. Cause then you only get nineteen. You still got six kills to get. Yeah. So especially yeah, people had that down to like a science. <laughs> yeah. And certain maps you would want to run, like if you were playing on high rise, you want to run the AC one hundred and thirty so you could have that that giant uh, rocket to flush people out of buildings. Mm-hmm. Uh, but if you were playing yeah. on an open map, like uh, oh, what's the name of the giant? It's like the giant field with like the only the very small bunker on the inside uh, in the center wasteland. If you were on wasteland. You'd want that was the one with the huge hedgerow going down the yeah. middle, right? If you were on Wasteland, you yeah. wanted the chopper gunner because because cl- there was no map. place to hide for people, and you could just mow people down as they spawned. Yeah. But uh, that I actually played COD Four after I played Call of Duty Five, which was an interesting experience because I heard all this all this hype around COD Four, and I obviously didn't play it at its height. Um, you never played COD Four. Not not. Really? Not in order. Like, I played... I got COD 4 probably after... Like, around Black Ops 3. Really? Yeah. Which is funny, because I had Call of Duty 3 for the Wii, and I had Call of Duty 5 for the Wii. And I had Call of Duty 5 for the Xbox 360. But I never got COD 4. Damn. Oh, so COD 4 is my favorite one. Speaking of COD 5, Zombies? Oh. Like, the original... Classic. The original uh, Duris and Nocturne Toten. Yeah, I didn't know. I'm gonna attempt to pron- pronounce that. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's German for uh, Night of the Undead, which you know makes sense. Yeah. Um, for the longest time though, I did. <laughs> what I when I used to play it on the Wii, for the longest time I didn't know that you could unlock other rooms on the fr- on Nocturne on Toten. So I would just <laughs> play with like the pistol and whatever gun you could buy in the first room. For probably, like, <laughs> 10, 12 rounds. Because that was the max you could make it without getting, like, a machine gun. Yeah. And I'd be, like, I'd be like, how the hell are people getting to, like, 50 rounds? And I'd, like, watch a video and I'm like, how the fuck did they get up there? You can't get up there, there's a couch in the way. And then I was like, oh, you can buy the couch? What? What is this idea? I'm, like, sitting here with, like, 12k, like, money earned. Like, what do you yeah. need all this money for? <laughs> so and when I just oh, go, makes sense. And like you, you know, Why'd they put a couch on the stairs. Like, you can't get up there. You know me, I'm a bit of a gambler. When I found the mystery box, I was like, oh. <laughs> I was like, I can spend all my money trying to get a good gun. <laughs> that was great. <laughs> That's when it all started. Yep, Tim's gambling. Exactly. <laughs> back back in Call of Duty Five with the mystery then box. You, then you shoot the radio with a uh, pistol. Yeah, you could get it to change the. Uh, Change the radio station. I loved all those. Oh, you could do the teddy bears on Duris. In the, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you had to, like, throw the monkey bombs at them. That was that was the the best map to try to go for rounds on, especially if you had four people. Because you could just sit... Yeah, so you leave the stairs covered, and then you get to the corner up there and, like, have two people with, like, machine guns. Yeah, and, 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 and if you got... Peter Clifford went oh, so hard on that. <laughs> Yeah, and if you got lucky, you could uh, get the mystery box to spawn up by you at least for a little bit. And what you would do is, um, because obviously you needed ammo during rounds sometimes, so you'd have one person like hit the box uh, yeah. to try to get a, a new machine gun. And what you would do in between rounds is, because if you went far enough, you'd stack up so much money that you could just endlessly hit the box. And this was before they introduced, you know, like, more than four perks and... Uh, like the upgraded perks that you could get, or like, uh, what's the name of the the one where you can run like three guns at once? I don't remember what it's called. It's like, a, oh, it's Mule Kick. 
before they introduced like veal kick where you could run three guns at once. So what you would do is you'd you'd get a crawler at the end of the round and you'd go wherever the box was and you'd just get the teddy bear to pop up and just keep doing that until it would go back to the balcony at the beginning of the round. So that you would always have uh, I never I never did that. Yeah, that was that took a lot of time. <laughs> yeah. Because I, I'm pretty sure it was on a pattern where it wouldn't go back to a spot until it had hit all the other spots. Mm-hmm. So that just took sometimes you couldn't do it in the like every round. You would just have to go in between the rounds and just hit it as much as you could until you could get yeah. it back on the balcony. But uh I never knew you can get it on the balcony. Yeah, on um on Doris. Oh, I thought you were talking about the uh not today. <laughs> no, no, the uh, on that the box only had one spot. Yeah, that's uh, that's why I was really confused. Yeah, I remember the first actually the first time, you know the sniper cabinet that's on that map? Yeah. I remember the first time I opened that, I had like a I think I had traded in a ray gun for the freaking like PTSR. <laughs> I was so upset. I was like, oh, what does this do? Click. PTSR. Where the fuck did my ray gun go? God damn it. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that was at the point where you could only have one ray gun on the map at any time. So, like, whoever got it was, like, the... It was, like, the, it was like that became the leader of the group because they had their yeah. ray gun. So I was like, shit. <laughs> Ran down to the box. Second pull. Somebody else gets it. I'm like, fuck. God damn it. I'm like, I just gave this up for some shitty sniper. <laughs> God, that PTRS was terrible. Oh yeah, especially against zombies. The what was the it, was it the car in uh in Call of Duty Five that was the the good sniper? Which Call of Duty? Five. The car ninety eight was that the best uh, sniper in COD Five? No, I think there was. I'm trying to remember what the name of the snipers were in that game. Here it is. We have the... Oh, it was the Springfield. No, it was the Car 98K. Okay. You had the Springfield, uh, the Moss and Nagget. <laughs> what did that gun look like? I don't even remember this gun. I'll be putting, uh, like, pictures up on, uh, up on the screen so you can you can see what I'm talking about. Um, the greatest gun of all time, the Pish Posh. The, the Pish Posh. That thing had so much ammo. It was ridiculous. Yep. You would run, you'd run that with, uh, with, uh, like, the extra health perk, the extra ammo, and then, like, Martyr Dom. Mm-hmm. So it's like, yeah, you killed me. Guess what? Wait. <laughs> Got you back. And that game, like, you couldn't change the kill streak, so it was, like, three for, it was three for a radar, five for an airstrike, and seven for dogs. So, you know. You get dogs early enough, and you have, like... I like that. That was so much simpler. Yeah, well, like, the killstreaks nowadays, like, I don't know if... You, you, you haven't even touched any of the recent Call of Duties. Um, I don't even want to know what the killstreaks are I've now. played some of them, but they're just not... It's just not the same, you know? Especially when they went with the futuristic stuff. And I think that's... They're just, I think that's they're where, just trying so hard. I think that's where, when you talk about, you know, older games you kind of have an affinity for the ones you played, you know, years ago, because it just feels like the the current ones are trying too hard to be something that they're not. Yeah, and then at the same time, they're all trying to be like the old games, and they can't. Yeah, and it's kind of cheap that they're just, you know, remaking the old ones and selling them, but at this point, that's the best thing they can do. They're not going to be able to get back to where... Honestly, I think Call of Duty as a series needs to end. Yeah. Like, I don't think they can make it. I mean, you can only go so far. Like, how many games are you going to make? <laughs> yeah, that's... And you, you you could say the same things for things like uh, like Far Cry, like you said before. Or, um... Or Assassin's Creed. Like, you just stop. Like, I'm... Like, it was great. You're pushing yeah. it too far. You gotta stop. Or, like, you don't even have to, like, close... Down, but, like, you make something else take, like, three or four years off and, like, kind of just clear the air and, like... Yeah. You look at, like, uh... uh I feel like they're like the Apple of the gaming world. They just repurpose, like do as little work as possible in between each game, and just resell it. Who, who made the Tom Clancy games? Was that Ubisoft? It was Ubisoft. Me and my yeah. me and my friends were talking about this uh, about a week ago or so. Some of the older games they made um, were fantastic. You talk about bro. Like... Did you did you ever play End War? No, I actually. 
I played it on my on my neighbor's uh console. I don't remember what it was on. I think it was like a PlayStation. Dude, when that game, oh my, when I played that game for the first time, I was mind blown. <laughs> How fucking crazy you could control everything with your voice. I was just like, wow, this is so cool. Because I, I love, like, um, uh, I don't know if you've ever played it, that um, Battle for Middle Earth game that is on the computer. I've, I think I've, and I've, I love the, I've I love the games where you can, like, house. control a lot of people and, like, watch them. Yes, yeah, so you like, you like, like, type you things like, like that. You like RTS games, real time strategy. Yeah. And like, oh my god, that game was amazing. I remember sitting down and watching one of my uncles play the original Splinter Cell on the original Xbox. Mm -hmm. And just like, eyes glued to the screen, like nothing was going to move me because it was just so fascinating. I don't even know what was going on. I was just like, he's he's got some stuff. He's, shoot, it's, <laughs> he's shooting people. It's amazing. I love it. Yeah. And then, you know. Nowadays, it's like they make. Watch Dogs was meh. Um, the division. Rainbow Six. Rainbow Six Siege is one of the best games I've ever played, though. I uh, I don't know as far as like balance wise how it is now because we haven't touched. I haven't touched it in a while. But when I rem I remember playing it with. They with, almost with have Dogs. it like perfected now. Talk talk. Like it. they, cause like they. From, like, a game that started out so, like, not shitty, but, like, just poor quality. It was not finished when they released it. So, like, where it is now and how much work that they've put in to actually make the game good instead of, like, what a lot of other people do, which is just, like, stop playing the game and then they'll just, like, either stop making the series because the game was so bad or they'll just make a new game instead instead of, like, just fixing their own mistakes because they already have a game that they spent, like, years making. Right. And yeah, like, I, they took, they took like an entire year and just did patches and fixes to the game. Um, oh yeah, kinda like I remember, a lot of. Uh, I remember Fresh like the year. Fortnite. Yeah, like what Fortnite does with the season thing. Um, it's kind of like that system, and they I don't remember what they called it, like Operation Health or something. Mm -hmm. And they took like six months, and they were like, "We're not adding anything to the game. We're just gonna perfect it." Like from what it is right now i remember freshman year there was a lot of server issues when we played initially yeah like, it was connected was just it was bad fucking disaster it's like PUBG right now on xbox oh, well, <laughs> basically is how it was when it started i wouldn't touch PUBG on xbox until they make it 60 fps yeah no but uh you look at like tom clancy now like the last game they put out was ghost recon wildlands which wasn't bad you know i played it on the xbox it was okay wasn't wasn't phenomenal by any stretch yeah, of the I played imagination. The, I played the beta. I spent an hour making my character. Well, that's just what you do. <laughs> um, it was so good, though, and then I actually played it, and I was like, oh, I only have an hour. It's like, shit. <laughs> <laughs> but, like, I don't know if you... Have you played any Far Cry 5? Oh, wait, hold on. Um, it's, not, it's not out yet. It's out March 27th. Have you played any Far Cry 4? Um, yes, I've... Did I beat Far Cry 4? I think I beat Far Cry 4. I just watched the end of what it was, because I just wanted to know what happened. You can also beat that game in like less than a minute. Yeah, well, you just sit there and don't do anything. Yeah. <laughs> that's great that they added that in. <laughs> I love that. I mean, that's what he asked you to do. It's true. That's, um... If we're talking about, like, uh, NPCs in video games and, like, Nowadays, I'm just, like, not trusting at all of anybody I run into in a game, especially, like, a single-player game. I'm like, what the fuck? Like, why are you trying to fuck me up? What are you, what, like, what's your goal? Why, why are you here? But, like, if, you, if, like, looking back on, like, Modern Warfare 2 with, like, Shepard, fucking bastard. Oh, my God, I fucking hate that. Yeah, I was, so I was, like, I was so convinced. I'm like, oh, this is great. Like, we're, we're, we're getting the bad guys. And then Shepard turned out to be a bad guy. And I was like, ah! Everything I know is a lie. Yeah, when he when he killed Ghost, I almost broke my TV. <laughs> yeah, and then like I was like uh, I was like, kill me, please, not Ghost. And like Do not soaps coming over the radio, like Ghost. trying to tell you that Shepard's evil and to like not trust yeah. him. And oh my god, the speech at the end of that game about uh like history, that yeah. So I don't I don't know if it's. 
I have like a pre, um, like I have a preconceived notion of what a game should be like from a certain series because of what I've played to the point where my expectations cannot live to up to a reality, or it, uh-huh. or it's just obviously you know there has been some regression, but you know like I watched through. Uh, all the cutscenes from I think it was Advanced Warfare, with uh, it was the one with Kevin Spacey. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. I forgot that they did that. And it's not like the storyline isn't. It's not great, no. But it's not. It's not terrible, you know. Obviously, they seem they seem to all like. I mean, I haven't played any of them, obviously, but like watching some of the, um, like the trailers and shit. Like all of the campaigns for the like. Probably since like maybe the first Black Ops, they all look exactly the same. It just has a different like skin on it. I mean, it seems like it's the same general premise. Some yeah, some guy, like they have some those guy comes big, along. Like, Michael Bay things like something comes crashing out of the sky, and then it's like some guy comes along, position of power on your side, turns against you, you kill him, game over. Yeah, yeah. Uh. Actually, it, it, this is this is a great comparison. Actually, if we're talking about we stick with Call of Duty, um, because they they World War Two. I don't know how much you played or if any you played of World War Two. I haven't played any. I don't have it. So, I think the problem with making a game like this, because obviously they did what everybody asked. They went back to the boots on the ground. They went back to what made what made Call of Duty a good series. But. I was sitting there as I'm playing, just you know, subconsciously comparing it to World at War, which it, it's not meant. Yeah, which it will never be as good as. No, it won't be, and it's not. It's not meant to be like the next World at War, but yeah, it's just. But that's where your mind goes. Right, exactly. Because it's been so long, exactly. So I just feel like, and don't get me wrong, I that was the first Call of Duty I enjoyed playing the multiplayer in in a long time was was World War Two. Um, but it's not the same game where I just I could sit down at like three p.m. and look up and it'd be eleven p.m. and I still want to play another eight hours. Yeah. And that's how I feel, especially with Modern Warfare Two. Like I can hear the the menu music in my head right now yep and i can <laughs> so just can I. I can just imagine clicking through with like all the the menu clicks and like the do 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 and mm-hmm. like picking out the uh the scar with a red dot sight and putting on the model 1887s as the secondary oh with my. the dualies to cheese people oh my fucking god <laughs> it's one of the worst call of duty weapons of all time <laughs> the akimbo model 1887 <laughs> <laughs> Shoot somebody from halfway across the map. Yep. Oh, oh they had the riot shield in that game, they did, right? Too. Yeah. And they had a painkiller as a as a death death perks. Okay, let's talk about death perks for a second. <laughs> I hate death perks as a concept. Is there any other game that those death perks? Not that I'm aware of, and I think there's a reason why. Because they were fucking terrible. Was there terrible? They were a bad idea. Um. I don't know what, I don't know off the top of my head. Um, I mean, I can understand that from like a design standpoint, where like if somebody's just atrocious, that like they can at least get some kills. Oh, it's okay. Here, here's the. But at the same time, it just ruins it for everybody else. Yeah. So, the four there were four death perks in Modern Warfare Two. Um, four of them were four deaths, or three of them were four deaths in a row, and then one of them was three deaths. So you had Painkiller, which was at three deaths, and it says it works almost like the Juggernaut perk from COD 4. After you respawn, gives you it says gives you twice the amount of health for 10 seconds. So it's not like you had 200% health until you died, which is, so that, that one's not terrible, but still, like, I guess that's if you're getting spawn camped, you can kind of try to break out of it. But besides maybe, like, Rust, there wasn't, any, there wasn't many maps that you could get spawn camped on. Yeah. Uh, and then the four that are at four deaths are... We have Copycat, which... Just stupid. Allows you to steal your killer's class. Yeah, that I never really understood. 
It says, the reason behind it, it says, this can give a sneak peek at the more advanced weapons, attachments, and perks before you've unlocked them. So I guess you would take this as, like, a noob, uh, and you'd be like, oh, shit, this guy's got the, you know, like, the AK with the, 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 the fall skin. Like, I want to see what this looks like. Oh, this is so cool. I hope I can get this one day. But yeah. it doesn't give you an advantage. Yeah, that one I think I used a few times. Like early on in the game. The one, the one that most people used to like test out weapons. Yeah. The freaking Marty Dom. Yeah, was Martyr Dom. Obviously, oh, you you know it. Everybody, I think, anybody who's played <laughs> Call of Duty knows what Martyr Dom is. You used to be able to take that as a perk in Call of Duty Four, like, and I think they realized they're like, okay, that's a little bit overpowered. We're gonna move that somewhere else. And then the last yeah. one also used to be a perk was Final Stand, which is like Last Stand. You know, you go down, you have just a pistol. Um, yeah. The... That one just was. Uh... Oh no! no wait, what it says you... it says you just sat there, right? It says you, you can crawl around on the ground and use your primary weapon. I don't remember using primary. weapon. No, I don't either. Which means that you could go down. I remember the pistol. Yeah, that's what I remember. But like the little shit, little nine mil pistol. Mm -hmm. It was, if it was primary weapon, it means that basically if you were spraying at somebody with the scar. That you could go down and still get the kill. Yeah. And then you could get a teammate to... I, th I don't remember if you could get picked up in Final Stand. Or... Yeah, that's what I don't remember either. I think, See, I think I it, back, when it was, back when it was a perk, I think you used to be able to get picked up. Yeah. Once, I think the death perk, though, it was kind of like... It was basically to get somebody a kill, and that's it. Because you're that shit that you've missed that much. And yeah. it'll give you the extra chance. But yeah, um... Intervention, still one of the best game in uh, video game snipers of all time. Which gun? The Intervention. I hated that freaking gun. <laughs> Why did you hate it so much? Because I'm not good at quick scoping, so there was... <laughs> I died to that more than any other gun. I was, I was a scar with iron sights with like a suppressor and a... Extended mags. I used one of the really like off meta uh guns. Oh the tar the, the tar was amazing. The I, ACR I used I used the good. tar and the FNF two thousand. Oh yeah, I never used that. I, I, I loved <laughs> that gun for some reason. Like the bullpup design of it just and it, I don't know why, just the noise it made when you fired it, it was like oh yes. <laughs> yeah, I so I love the reload sound on the. I can hear oh. the freaking, the scar reload mm -hmm. in my head. I'm looking at all the pictures of all the guns right now. Oh, the FAL, if you had a good trigger finger, was phenomenal. Ooh, yeah, that was good oh, too. Oh, the ACR too as well. Oh, I love the ACR. With the, the ACR with a red dot. Yeah, that, I think that's why I use the scar more because I like the iron sights, so I didn't have to use a. You didn't have to waste a slot for a scope. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. Alright, well, this seems like a good point to wrap it up here. Um, you can find me on Twitter, on pretty much any social media. It's just at Board Ultimatum. Uh, it should be in my YouTube description. If not, I'll put it in the link to this video. Uh, Connor, is there anywhere that uh, you want to shout out for uh, people to follow? Uh, yeah, uh, you can find me on Instagram, Haller for three, or my other Instagram page that I just recently made for photography, which is just Haller underscore photo. Ooh. Little, uh, little cheeky photography page there. Yeah, cheeky. Posting pictures from your, your, uh, abroad in Europe. Yes. All right. Well, that's going to do it for us here. Uh, this has been Joy Shtick, episode two. Next week in episode three is either going to be uh, difficult games. Are they too hard? Or I'm going to bring on one of my streamer friends and he's going to talk about uh, streaming culture, uh, what it's like to play games uh, in front of people and how that, you know, playing in front of people in a chat like that can affect how you play games. Uh, but for now, that's going to be it for me. I uh, appreciate you stopping by and I'll uh, catch you next week. See ya.